Oh, right, right, right. What the heck is going on, everybody? We are back with the big grand finals. It's the Masters Coliseum. $42,000 grand finals between Basilisk, Serral in the top right, and the surprising hero. A lot of people counting hero out recently, saying that he's uh, not doing very well. Some people saying he was a bit washed up. But Dragon Kaiser Gaming Zero has managed to cleave his way through the bracket, find himself in the grand finals, and it is a massive best of nine. So. You need to win five maps to win this series. It's going to be an epic one. That is pretty much guaranteed. Best of nines are incredibly rare in StarCraft. Partially because, well, we always had a seven map map pool. But we've actually got a bigger nine map map pool right now. It makes things so much more exciting. And uh, interestingly, Serral did not open up with a 15 hatch 15 pool. So I think what's happened here between Serral and Hero is I did watch them play maybe a month ago. And... Hero went across to try and block. Serral went for a 14 hatchery. So he actually went for his hatchery of supply early. Hero wasn't able to block it. Therefore, he was just sending a probe across for no real reason, losing a lot of mining time and, and suffering as a result. Oh, interestingly, he's gone Cybercore before Nexus. He's assuming that Serral's taken the gold base. Oh, he's not even scouting. He's just assuming it. Okay, I think this might be the two gate build. So it's one gas right now. So so the way this works is you chrono two adepts across the map. Or maybe a stalker first, actually, to try and kill the overlord. That's an option as well. But um, you're going to build a second gate. And you're just going to basically try and keep him busy with adepts coming out of, the, of both gateways at once. So 150 minerals here. Second gateway goes down. Pylon is very easy to surround, unfortunately. However, you've got a nice little choke point that you can put the adepts in either there, there, or there. Unfortunately for him, several is... Where is Serral going with this Overlord? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's going right towards it. Oh no, has Hero used it? Hero must have used this build before. Serral always does his homework. He always studies his opponents and he's always well prepared. Oh, that is so bad for Hero. Because remember, the Overlord has very long vision. So Hero with his probe is smiling. He doesn't know that that Overlord spotted him. And Serral, knowing about this, is still going to take the gold base right in front of it. But with the knowledge to be ready. Now, it is, in fact, an Adept first. Stalker only comes out second, which means an easy escape for that Overlord. Now, the Overlord didn't see that the gas wasn't mining. That's pretty big. But having seen the second gateway, I think he's already got all the information that he needs right now. Link speed is on the way. Ten more links are building off 24 workers. Now, the, the thing is, are we looking to overwhelm this and surround it? I would imagine so. Third gateway goes up behind it as well as a fourth. Is this a... Is he doing a Hitman build? He is! Oh, but he pulled his Stalker down, Hero. Oh, he just let the Overlord see that there was no probes building. He started a probe to, to, to you know, do it. But any gap in probe production there is such a big tell. Serral's going to do nothing but build Zerglings right now. He has got all the information he needs. He knows you're proxy gating. He knows that you don't have the second gas. And he knows that you, you weren't building probes for a second there. He's like, okay, there is a giant all-in coming. Now, Hero, having been spotted, goes back to chronoing probes and taking extra gases. He's going to try and macro out of this, which is a very intelligent choice, as he's already got a massive worker advantage. Unfortunately, he will lose his proxy. That's going to go down super easily. A nice start to the series here for Zaral. Admittedly, on his map pick, a very good map for Zerg versus Protoss. Um, Hero? Oh, doesn't get that warp in. At least he gets a refund. He can warp those units in at home, and indeed he will. Three more Adepts warping in at home. These Adepts are going to come forward and protect the gateway, pick off a few of those Adepts there. They do shade out to safety. The Stalker's going to go down. Oh, that's unfortunate. He could have pulled the Stalker back. Now that he loses the Stalker, the Overlord can freely scout the entire base. What? Was that a Roach Warren? It must have been. It's at 113 minerals return. That means it's a Roach Warren. So he's cancelled a Roach Warren has, Cyril. He's going Baneling Nest instead. Interesting. I mean, that's... They're okay to counter Adepts. I guess it's more mobile because his third base is so far spread, but... Definitely something that can get a little bit odd. Forge and Twilight are going down. Hero will need to move away from Adepts in this game. He cannot stay on Adepts. I'm imagining we're going to see Blink into a third base, but it could be Charge as well. If he goes Glaives, he's absolutely bananas crazy. I'm saying this, and I'm already realizing who I'm casting. It, it is Hero. We know he's a little bit crazy. You're not going to go Glaives and plus one. Please don't do that, Hero. Please try and win the game. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Blink plus one and a gold Nexus on the way. That's going to be a much better choice there. And a good recall for Hero as well. I mean, Hero's been pretty efficient, but... Oh, those Adepts actually got out of there. 
He's only lost two Adepts, one Stalker for 19 Zerglings. Unfortunately, Serral will now transfer those uh, drones, no doubt. Bane Nest is down, Roach Warren on the way. Seeing there's no more commitment, Serral kind of chills out and goes for the better long-term tech in the Roach Warren. The Adepts are going to shade down here and go after these Zerglings, but that is a lovely surround on the Nexus. Grabs it, kills the probe. That's going to massively delay it being taken as a new probe has to mineral walk on out and try to retake it. And uh, oh, I don't know, what, what's the play here? Several's economy is not massive, but with a gold base and now a purple gas on it as well. I'm wondering how you bring this back as hero. I think you need to exert a lot of stalker pressure, micro your heart out, keep Serral on a low work account, and try to slowly probe up this third and take a fourth behind it. And I, I think it's possible just because stalkers are so microable, but he's got to keep that base alive. And oh, Sentry's preemptively warped in. Fantastic play by hero. Not getting caught out a second time. Five gateways are on the way. It's going to be eight gate, three base production. Several still only on 46 drones. He does have a lot of money in the bank though, but it's going to be roaches. 44 Zergling, six Banelings on the map. He's looking for a big wraparound. If he can trap these Adepts in place and land the Banelings on them, that'll be big. Here, are, he sees the Lings. He doesn't know about the Banelings just yet. He's going to have to defend these. Oh, here come the Lings. The Storks and the Sentry is going to need to help with this. The Adepts are very clumped up. Banelings going to look for the center. Nice force field to start. Second force field's okay. The Adepts survive for a little bit. But man, the Banelings are very powerful. They take out most of those Adepts. And I think overall a good choice to pull back. Blink and plus one are finished. So the Stalkers can chase down one Baneling. But Serral playing very cautiously as he starts this series. And I guess I shouldn't really be surprised. You're in a best of nine. You want to feel your opponent out. And you know he's a bit of a cheesy boy. So Serral's playing a bit more cautiously. Taking the gold base was the, the one greedy move that he did. And ever since then, it's just been kind of hedging his bets, trying to make sure that nothing goes too far awry. Baneling speed's on the way, as well as roach speed. Plus one melee. A couple ravages morphing. And four more drones building. 62 drones for Serral right now. 59 probes for Hero. Hero's going to go double forge. Usually not one of my favorite styles, but if you get to say three, two upgrades, it feels like it turns a corner and suddenly becomes very worthwhile. Phoenix comes in for the scout. He's right now looking for work account. That's the most important thing for Hero to scout to gauge what Serral's focus is. He sees a lot of drones on the fourth base. That tells him Serral's going above 66, potentially up to 80 workers. We, of course, can see the number is 70. It's a little more conservative than that. Just 10 drones on that fourth base for now. More gateways are on the way. That's going to be 10 gate zealot stalker sentry, man. Five sentries or four, sorry. That's a big commitment. Warp prism as well towards the main. That's kind of funny because Ravager Ling Bane is a, a composition that expires very early in ZVP. If you're both like four base versus four base, you know, Colossus, Immortals, Disruptors, all destroy it. If you play Zealot Stalker, Ravager Link Bane can actually be the more efficient composition. Just why getting this fourth up is essential. I do like that fourth base. If Hero can probe up a little more as well, he'll be able to contest in the long term. But now he's going for an Immortal. It's kind of weird because he's got sentries. He's faking a Colossus there with a Hallucinate. He's going to pull into a corner. But look at that. Serral senses that he's overcommitted. He's going to pounce on top of this. A wise choice. The Lings are not really getting a lot of surface area, but they're tanking well. Ravager's diving on top. Look at those Stalkers trying to blink away. Where is the recall? Where the heck is the recall? Well, Hero does go for a massive Zealot Warp in the main. Charge kicks in. The Queens are going to start going down. Stalkers trying to escape on that right side. Uh, on that left side, sorry. Six Stalkers, four sentries did go down. The Zealots, though, starting to find some big damage if they can kill all these Queens. That would be huge. Serral pulling them away, desperately trying to hang on. One Transfuse does remain. Nice Transfuse goes down. Another Transfuse. If he can save these Queens, that'll be big for Serral. And it looks like he is going to be able to. Did he lose any drones? Only one drone went down in the midst of this. Hero is trading evenly with the Zerg. As I said, a Protoss gateway army. It's not what we normally think of in years past when we talk about Protoss. Once you get plus three, plus two, yes, you can micro blink stalkers for great value. But the Zealots are almost always going to be cost inefficient unless you can catch your opponent off guard. They need to really kill drones to find the efficiency. It's the mining time lost, the drones that they kill... All those sorts of things will allow you to kind of catch your opponent off guard. The Stalkers distract on the front because you can't force a win with Stalkers. You can pick at them. You can clear creep. You can harass. You can take good trades. You can't win the game with the Stalkers. But you can then run the Zealots in the back at the same time. Look at those guys tanking a lot of Banelings. The Zealots in the main do go down. All three of them actually saved by the Warp Prism. Stalkers picking off some of that creep. The Immortals being out here off uh, the edge of creep is really bad for Hero. It's very, very bad. 
He needs to make sure he keeps those units a little bit safer. He's going up to eight gases right now. I say eight, it's actually seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This counts as two because it is, of course, a purple gas double mining available off that. One Viper, second Evo Chamber on the way, plus two melee and Adrenal Gland. Sarah's looking for a big timing. He didn't go that high on economy. He doesn't have his Hive uh, tech up yet. His Adrenal Glands is on the way, but he's not really going for Broodlords or anything. He's got to keep the Protoss small. He cannot let Hero take this fifth base. And here we go. What is there to defend? 16 Stalkers, two Immortals, two Archons, and a few Zealots coming south. Not a very fearsome army by any means. Mass Queen dealing with the War Prism Hero. Oh gosh. Oh, Hero, what are we doing, mate? Not good micro from Hero, unfortunately. Looks like one of his Immortals did go down as well. Two Immortals, actually. They must have rallied in from the right side of this engagement. Oh no. Hero with a bit of disorganization of his forces. He does start to try and chase Serral back. But of course, Serral is Remax. Serral has Mass Ravager Link Bane. What is there to fall back on here? I never really thought the Immortals was a great choice in here because it was such a Gateway Man style. But I think the Archons can really help out if they have some battery healing, but they don't. The building battery gets taken out. The Stalker Spreadies are good from Hero. He's massively outnumbered, though. Hero makes amazing comebacks all the time versus Dark. All the time versus Rainer and other players. Can he do it versus Serral, though? It's a bloody long shot. That's what it is. Serral's way too solid, man. And I think using the gold base, using that early scout on the proxy gateway, Hero was not able to bring him to the Chaos Zone. And that was always Hero's plan here. Take Serral into deep waters. Make it messy. Yeah, I might I might gulp down a bit of seawater in the chaos as well, but I'm used to it. You know, Hero is the kind of guy who's used to gulping down seawater. He's used to fighting in the hot and sweaty scenarios. Uh, Serral, of course, he's very good at stopping himself from ever getting to those scenarios, and that's exactly what he's done here. Roach Ravager Zergling take out the Archon. Files are evaded. Somehow Hero survives, and that in itself, itself is uh, sort of magical. I, I feel like any other Hero, uh, any other Protoss player in Hero's shoes would be dead, but... For Hero, he's like, yeah, no worries, man. Six Overlords, though. Going to get ready to drop the main, probably with Mass Zergling. Three, two upgrades kick in. I talked about how this point could be very powerful. That's assuming you're not down at less than half their army supply. Having a few extra upgrades is really huge at taking a fight that looks kind of bad and turning it into a kind of good fight for you. Or a fight that looks even and turning it into a really good fight for you. But when you're in a hopeless position, a couple of upgrades are not the biggest thing to change that around. Disruptors, storm shots, splash damage, those are the big comeback mechanics in these scenarios. Why aren't we running the probes? Oh no! Oh man, the probes just sitting there for a while. Hero's gonna try to come down, but his army splits again, just like it did earlier. Here's a Mortal Archon separate from his store because he goes after the Viper. Oh, that would be such a juicy pickoff on the south side. Looks like Banelings found that mineral line as well. 15 workers do go down. Bad camera work for me. The Viper does fall, but a few Stalkers will be taken out in revenge. Nice moves by Serral, looking to punish. Banelings rolling in. He pulls back the Banelings. I think that's a good choice. Wait for your opponent to clump up. Leave them there as a way to dissuade Zealots from jumping on your Roach Ravager Zergling. And as he clumps forward, that's when the Banelings roll in. Not really getting any big hits, but allowing him to clean up the front line of Archons. Those Biles catching a Zealot, cleaning up the Nexus. And Serral's going to disengage. He wants to pull back, wait for those 50 Zerglings to finish, morph them all into Banelings, and then go again. Do not lose your core of Roach Ravager, because those units are slower to build and slower to reinforce. Hero's dead. Hero's dead in the water. It's only game one of the best of nine. I'm already thinking about the next map pick. What do you pick as Hero? I'm wondering because I haven't really cast any best of nines on this map pool, and I'm like, what is the best Protoss map? Equilibrium. I know Max Pax does very well versus Zerg on this map, but I think generally it is considered a, a, a Zerg map. I do wonder, maybe Hero picked this map, actually. There is a chance he did because of the gold base kind of putting Serral in a position where he'd want to do something crazy, but Serral's going to go in with the Ling drop in the main. Nice, easy mass drop there. Dominating, smashing. And it opening up a new front. We all know how useful that is. When you're ahead, sometimes your opponent can hold a single angle. But if you attack from two or three sides, it's like, nah, man. There's no way you can split your army to defend all of these positions at the same time. Biles taking out that front pylon as well. Nine probes go down. Serral's so slow and methodical here. Waiting for his queens to be in position to defend the warp prism. He's got a spire almost up that he can start corruptors to kill the prism. As well as a greater spire to counter the ground army. Plus three armor is actually here. Now you might be wondering, why do people go armor instead of shields? The reason is Zealots and Immortals both have double the hit points compared to shields. Getting that up to four hit points uh, or four armor is actually massive. 
Especially if you're fighting Hydras that don't have range attack upgrades. A lot of Zergs only go melee upgrades. Those Hydras do like no damage. Queens do very little. Zerglings even aren't going to do that much. Even with the plus two attack that's been made, or actually plus three, it's uh, eight armor minus four up against those immortals. Zealot Stalker trying to pull back right now. Oh me, oh my, that's a lot of Ravager Link Bane. Serral's just rolling forward. He doesn't need to make it pretty. He has the numbers. This game is, is past the point in no return, or at least it looks that way. Hero, I've counted them out before and I've been wrong. Oh, he does lose five probes, but he manages to somehow defend. He's still got 70 workers up. If he can defend this base over here as well with a quick warp in. Oh, that Link Run Bite does get a few more probes. Bit of value coming in there for Serral. Now, Serral has to kind of up the ante a little bit. He does need to either get a move on or finish that Great Aspire and go for the next stage. Because as much as, as much as it's powerful, plus one Plasma Shields is done as well. That helps out a bit. You've got a few Archons and Immortals growing. Hero doesn't have a sixth base and his gold is mining out. So his income overall is not that crazy high, but 2,400 minerals a minute. He's going to be allowed to max out. And I don't know, if, if it was Rainer or Dark in Serral's shoes, I'd be shouting at the screen right now because those guys do not really like playing late game versus Protoss. The reason I don't really mind right now is I know that Serral is one of the best CVP late game players. I've watched enough of his stream to see that he almost always gets pushed to late game by Protoss. Unless he kills them with like his first big attack, he's kind of like, he'll, he'll just look for good fights, chip away, hit timings, but he's never all in. And he's always looking to build up to Broodlords, Infestors, Vipers, late game army, but he's still looking for the opportunity. Too many Archons. Those Zerglings were not going to do well against that. Plus two Carapace and plus two range are finishing in a moment. Eight Zergling drop into the main. Looks like the Corruptors came in and tried to do a bit of PP as well. Cannon actually goes down. Man, Adrenal plus three Zerglings are insane. Are they going to kill a Stalker? No. Oh my lord. Eight Zerglings getting way more damage than I expected. Archon Stalker and Mortal Zealot Army trying to pull back. Hero is almost maxed out. Can you believe it? From the position he's been in this game, he is making this into a battle. He's got a spread though. Hero spread! He's a little bit too clumped right now. He does pull back, blinks his stalkers. His immortal Archon is still a bit too clumped against that number of Banelings. I love the Zealot flank from behind. The Archon spready in the front. It's a very artful engagement by Hero. Will it be enough though? Units lost is dead even. Three threes on the way for Serral. Serral does have a great Aspire. Those two Corruptors are still just hanging out right now. Where are they in the north of the map? He's going to come south. Morph two Broodlords, I would imagine. He's making more Ravaging Bane right now. I don't know. I feel like Serral should keep opening up new fronts. Hit this side with half of his army. Hit down here with the other half. It's going to be tough for Hero to remax. Hero's got a few Stalkers. He's got six Archons and one Immortal. It's not a giant army. Serral comes in, snipes the sixth base. Easy snipe there. And of course, you can't get surrounded as Hero. You have to pull back. You've got to respect this. Oh no, a probe rally directly into the base that just went down. Hero's going to try and fight it from two sides. Serral's got to be careful not to get sandwiched. He feels he has the numbers to just push through and overwhelm. He's probably right. The front few Archons go down. Banelings rolling into the middle line. They're going to take out a lot of these probes as well. Hero showing some valiant fight from behind. He just does not have the numbers. Unfortunately, that Robo as well is very poorly placed. Walling his own units off from moving between here. A huge mistake. Zealot run by. Does get a few drones, starts to clear up the queens. It's going to go into the main base as well at the same moment, but that means he's not even warping in units to defend. He had to cancel his own robo. And uh, Desperation, Zella warping. It can do a bit of damage in a macro game. When you're on 39 probes, you are done for. It's only a matter of time until he GG's. He's trying to recall the prison, which is adorable. We, of course, can see on the income tab, it's three times the income advantage. Serral. Has got his 3-3 range carapace. He's got his Bane S being rebuilt. Those two Corruptors still just being used as an anti warp Prism squad right now. Serral was anticipating it coming back on the north of the map, which is why he sent the Corruptors up there. Zealot Stalker Archon building the warp Prism in phase mode. And Serral kind of just slowly choking Hero out. The danger for Hero psychologically is reading too much into this. He's been outnumbered for the last 10 minutes in a way where the best players in the world are going to struggle to make a comeback. Most players like Dark will finish you off a lot quicker. Serral won't. Serral's more careful. He takes his time. And if you're not used to playing against that, you can get your spirit worn down. Let's hope that Hero stays strong as Serral takes map one. All right, going into game two, we got Serral on the bottom right side of Golden Aura. So actually, I think my theory that that last map was Hero's map pick is correct. Because this map is about as standard as they come. 
Hero doing one of his famous hero walls with the pylon in the wall as a famously weak point that can be busted. Uh, and he's going to go for a gas first. So Hero is basically just saying, look, I, I don't want to play the guessing game of whether or not you're going to go 15, 14, or 16 hatchery. You went 16 hatchery game one. This game, it is actually 15 hatchery into 15 spawning pool that Serral will play. Hero is just like, screw it. I'm not, I know that Serral's good enough at like changing it up. I, I, it's a bit of a coin flip, which you'd think Hero would embrace. But I feel like because historically Serral's kind of been very good at guessing which one that Hero is going to play and, and kind of having the correct hatchery timing to not get blocked. Hero's decided, screw it. I'm just going to play a, a very greedy gas first. He's going to have this interesting gateway, Cybercore. And the idea is this is the third base. So the weak point of your wall is on the inside. Whereas if you take this third over here, that's the outside of the wall, if you know what I mean. It's, it's the more exposed part because your army is going to be centralized defending here to defend this third base. Whereas if you take the third down here, which is, of course, better to defend on this map, he's here, which means he can very easily defend the weak point of the wall. So I actually, I like the wall as, as weird as it is to put the pylon in the wall off. I think this is pretty awesome. Um, it also, you know, means he doesn't need to build a third structure to wall off or anything like that. So keeps him uh, safe against very early Zerglings entering the base. It means he can say Chrono is first adept across the map and then block with just a single probe. Second pylon does go down behind this and he's going to be going onto the second gas in the main. Serral has not taken a gas at all. Whoa, Serral. Three hatchery gasless, really? Or at least maybe not three hatchery. Maybe he just... But I mean, he hasn't taken gas yet. He could just go four queen. He might even, I mean, there is like a build where you go six queen here. Just the, delaying the gas this long is weird. At this point, if you haven't taken your gas by 2.30, then you're not going to take it until you go double gas at the same time. And uh, yeah, straight into two more queens. Super economy build order. We, we've got an arms race of greed right now. Hero is trying to adapt his aggressive play to deal with Serral. No doubt he'll use this early greed in order to uh, simply hit earlier pressures. First adept going across the map. There are two lings waiting, but they don't enter the base. Missed opportunity for Serral, as he does fly past the Stargate. Gas goes down now. It is a single gas, but only after that third hatchery. So four queens into a third hatchery, then the gas goes down. Single adept is entering that natural. There are no lings on the defense. Two queens are out there though, and there's two queens in the main. Notice he's hugging the mineral lines, realizing queens cannot contest the mobility of those Adept Shades. Oh, a little sloppy on the Queen Micro. The Adept will take the opportunity. Says, hey, if you're not on top of me, might as well get a bit of damage done. But look at that. Serral's so good with his Drone Micro. Oh, he messed that one up. I called it a bit too early. He loses two. Okay. All right. Oh, this is good. This is really good. For me, I always look at Serral as just such a big favorite in this matchup. But uh, the Adept did get taken out by these Queens. That Queen killed it, by the way. Unfortunate for him. It's always promising to see after a game one where Serral's just all over him, slowly playing with his food for five minutes. This time, Hero's had a very good start. Uh, Void Ray's on the way. Oracle, second gateway. And no doubt he'll be thinking about a third base in the near future. That There is a Zergling watching for it. Luckily, that Adept will come home and clean that up. Third Nexus, Hero. Third Nexus. Oof. Had the money for a while, but it got blocked by the Adept. So he does delay it by a moment. First Oracle's out. Hasn't started the second Oracle yet. Straight into Twilight Forge off one Void Ray, one Oracle. It's a much lighter harassment opening than we're used to seeing. Four Queens are out. Two more building. Link Speed has just started. Oh, man. This is this is actually such a juicy economy that Serral's working off this early. Void Ray and Oracle can take out that Queen rather easily. And, oh, I like the way the Oracle goes in and out. Oh, he's just going to die for it? Here are you, Mad Dog. Takes a bit of damage on both of those units. I, I do kind of feel like killing the drones is, is, is an easier target, but perhaps knocking a queen down, removing some of Serral's overall firepower is enough to kind of keep you going at this point. Get you a bit of momentum so the next waves can do even more. Oh, he commits to the shade. Crazy move there by Hero. Of course, that's, that's basically his MO. He's famous for crazy moves, gambles, and ridiculous aggression. He's going to shade into the main and look for one more kill. And he will not be getting anything. He's not even microing it, I don't think. Oh, he actually tries to do there for a second, but of course it is a uh, bit of a vain effort. Now there is an Overlord in the back. He could try to fly a Void Ray back here and snipe it, but uh, for now it looks like the Void Ray's returned home. Units lost have looking very good there. And actually, is that double Robo? Did Serral see it? No. Okay, so he killed a Link Scout. Immediately goes double Robo. It's a charge 
and plus one attack opening. So four gateways into double robo off, off the Oracle and Void Ray. Wow. Lair and Hatchery is on the way. If Serral goes Spire, that'll be pretty good for him. It's it's not... Oh, okay. He sees the Zealots coming. This is enough of Zealots to scare him. This is really good. It's going to force him to build Roaches. Um, he doesn't realize yet that it's only four gateway commitment. The shield battery maybe tips him off to that, though. Serral might realize I just need 9, 10 Roaches. And if he goes back to droning now, it's actually perfect. Oracle gets pushed back on the left side. Three adepts have gone down, five drones, six zerglings, an overlord and a queen. Roach speed is on the way. Serral continuing to build roaches and overlords for now. Stasis trap does go down on that base. He's going to need to send one unit in to set it off. Accidentally sends a roach in along with the queen. And I like this move for Hero. Focusing down the fourth hatchery for a zealot or two would be great. And so far, just one zealot going down. Well worth it. Spire starts though. That's a problem. Serral knows he's against an immortal charge opening. Uh, or, or mid game, I should say. And that's always the, the problem you run into with this style, especially with double forge. I mean, he is making blink, so at least he can defend with stalkers to a certain extent. A few gateways coming up here, so it's six gateways as well. And the Zergling does scout that. Zealot Oracle moving around the right side, just using it to clear creep right now. It does get rid of one more active tumor. Zealots are very quick with their shoes upgrades, so they can simply back away and make sure they don't cause too much trouble. Zergling kills the probe that builds the fourth base. That's the second kill that Zergling has. Not often a Zergling gets multiple kills when you're playing Protoss, uh, Zerg versus Protoss. I do like the fourth base timing though. In, in terms of playing a macro game, that'll be very good for Hero. Serral has stopped on 68 workers though. So he has a mixture here of quite a decent ground army for this stage in the game and enough money banked up to build probably seven, maybe eight or nine Mutalisks the moment the spy is done. Spire is popping as we say that. He's fainting across the map with an attack. When we say fainting there, that's F-E-I-N-T-Y. Oh, T-I-N-G, I should say. But a, a faint is in a, a fake. A, a, I am posturing. I am moving around. Seen a few non-native English speakers get confused by that one recently. So that's just for their benefit. I'm not... Some people, some people get a bit sensitive. They're like, we're not idiots. We speak English, pig. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't grow up speaking English as their first language, so. Oracle does pull away right now. Hero does not know, though. That's the big problem, man. He just doesn't know about that Spire at that third base. Nine muters are out. They're flying across that map. Did the Oracle just see it? I don't think he saw them. They're going to come in behind that third. There's no movement to respond. There's no stalkers on this map. He's only got seven gateways finished. Two, two upgrades on the way. Hero's got such a good setup for defending ground. But Mutalisks are his weakness, and they find the mark. Look at that. Serral dives in behind this third. Looked like the Oracle was doing some pressure at the same time while scouting the fourth base, but... Oh, this is painful. Lots of Stalkers warping in. Phoenix trying to build. Ten probes have already gone down, and Serral's already abandoned the Mutalisk tech. So he's actually just going straight back to that, uh, that big ground army. Hero Zealot run by, does get swarmed by Ling Roach at the same time. Mutalisks aren't bouncing around. Nice Phoenix Micro to pick off one or two of them. And he's ready to blink to that low ground. Serral takes a probe out as he departs the base. Phoenix picking off a few of these Mutalisks. But Serral happy to have killed 16 workers there. Hero, I feel like he could have probed up during that maybe a little bit harder, but it's always tough. He's now down 25 workers and it's okay. You can defend the all-in of Roach Ravager Ling Bane and you'll be fine. But wait, it's several. It's not an all-in. So many players after muters like that just try to kill you with lair tech, but it's several. He's got double Evo. He's making Overlord speed. He's got the Hive coming up. So he's going to keep pressuring and looking to deny bases, see if he can pick off units with a good fight. But he doesn't feel forced to commit here. And that is, of course, the unique several experience. Not too many Zergs feel that way in this matchup. Adrenal Glands, of course, uh, is one of the key upgrades that you want the Hive for. Vipers would be great as well. Mutalisks find the Void Ray. Ooh, that'd be a good catch. But the Shield Battery, Phoenix and Cannon should defend it. And two Phoenix destroy Muters so hard. They could take out four Muters easily. Massling Bane comes in. Great Force Field in the north. Uh-oh. Ravages breaking those Force Fields. Immortal Archon trying to hold the line. That probe line is not long for this world. The Banelings are crashing through the Immortals, the Archons, and the Stalkers. Those probes go down. Hero tends to be very slow to evacuate probes from his bases. He doesn't like to do it. He always says, no, 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 I can defend this. 
works well when he's ahead or he's doing decently in the game, but when he's a bit on the back foot after being surprised by those mutilists, Serral finds 14 workers and an extra skill. I think if you pull those 14 probes back, you can send those pretty much all onto the third, oversaturate it, instantly rebuild the fourth. Maybe, maybe you can recover from here. But so far, it looks like Serral is just building advantage upon advantage. He's got the gold in the bottom left. Sixth base going up here on the triangle. Adrenal glands plus two range. And of course, plus three melee is likely to be one of the next upgrades. Oh, did he just cancel it again? He just ran in, sacrificed a few Zergings to cancel it again. Serral's on fire right now. Just keeping Hero away from that critical mass of Protoss units. It seems like he's very focused on the Double Forge. The 2-2 upgrades are nice, but I don't think you want to be predictable with Double Forge. Double Forge spends a lot of money on things where if you're even at max out or close to max out later on, those upgrades are worth so, so much. And it's easier to look at that and to, to kind of go, oh, well, why don't we just always go upgrades? And the reason is, by the time you get close to maxing out, your opponent's so far ahead of you from winning the previous fights, killing bases, killing probes, and uh, are trading very well, even though it says down 2,000 resources lost. That's actually very well in this scenario, because of course the Zerg was killing probes, killing bases, and it's Zerg versus Protoss, where the Zerg has had a big economy lead. And that's where you can start to fall down. So I think no matter what happens, even if Hero can pull this one back, next game, I want to see him go for splash damage faster, whether that's Storm or Disruptors. I think splash damage is very necessary. Maybe mix in a Stalker Colossus timing. Serral just went over supply, guys. He just uh, built a bunch of Spore Crawlers, Morph broad Broodlords, and then canceled the Spores. So he basically has just killed his drones, but only temporarily to go up to 200 supply, canceled them, got the five drones back, and is now at 205 supply. It's a trick we don't see used in pro play very much anymore. But good thinking of Serral, realizing he was maxed and couldn't morph those last Broodlords as quickly as he wanted now, these queens do not have overlords with them. There is no creep spread with them either. There we go. Two overlords are coming forward. Dropping creep with this would be fantastic. Uh-oh. Broodlords get jumped on. The lings are a bit far behind. Luckily, he only loses one broodlord. Hero could have taken out the second one if he was a little quicker on that. Six Archon, seven Immortals, 12 Stalkers, and a Void Ray. It's not an elite army just yet for Hero, but he's got three, three upgrades on the way, which could be massive. Stalkers blink forward, two Broodlords do go down. He's going to get a third as well, but most of his Stalkers have gone down. The Immortal Archon struggling on the right side. Those Broodlords raining down death on them. The Roach Ravager dealing so much damage from behind as well. Nice battery overcharge, though, keeping those Immortals up. One more Archon falls. The Broodlords will pull back, Serral being cautious. He's got a Dropper Lord morphing on the front line. I think that might be a mistake, or it could be to transport these Queens around. Either way... So far, Hero holds on. The question is, what's the next step? How does he continue to hold on? No Colossi, no Psy Storm. Archons are very short range splash damage. Not as good as those other units I'm talking about. Stalkers blink back. That means he's used his blink on at least some of his Stalkers. He needs the Broodlords up over here so he can blink on them. If they're sitting over here, he can't reach them from the edges or not with enough Stalkers to do significant damage. Prism goes in the main. Serral doesn't notice it and actually flies his Corruptors away. He's reinforcing his Broodlords on the front line. He's going to be going back up to nine Broodlords. He breaks a gateway on the left as well. Top right, Hero takes a base. Serral immediately dispatches the Zergling squad. They know what their job is. They're going to have two one upgrades as well as Adrenal Glands. A few Zealots will not be enough to stop that. He's distracting in the south. That's all you can call this. It's purely a distraction. And oh my gosh, the probes. Oh no, Hero was so distracted keeping his probes alive in the bottom that he gets his Nexus killed, not cancelled. And that is a very big problem. He's trying to rebuild his pylon so he can wall off as well as repower his Robos. Observer does get a bit of vision of where Serral is and what he's up to. Serral is just all over this game so far. That scout on the proxy gate in the previous map was absolutely essential. Great storm drop. Gets the Banelings and does get on the Broodlords a little bit as well. But only two High Templar in there. He needs a bit more storm than that. Three, three upgrades are here though. Those Broodlings are only going to be doing 6 damage in attack. Minus 4 armor on the Stalkers, which means 2 damage. So, ooh, that first Storm kind of sucks. Second Storm does hit a lot of the Broodlords. But unless you've got Stalkers on top actually focusing them down, it's a problem. And when you blink forward, the Banelings and the Zerglings roll up. Oh, nice punish for Serral there. Hero tries to save some units with the War Prism. He's getting overrun right now. Stalkers suck against Ling, Bane, Ravager. 
they're not the best unit in terms of raw damage. They need to blink on the Broodlords and take them out. Usually against this style, you would counterattack. You would split your army up. And when the Zerg splits their army up, you try to ambush the Broodlords whenever they don't have enough support. But fighting into it front on is so, so difficult. It's just Mass Stalker slowly dying to Broodlings, Zerglings, Banelings, Roaches in the back line as well. And Hero finds himself on the back foot and just slowly getting swarmed. All right, well, he's on a roll and he is wanting to continue that roll now with a very fancy opening gas pool on the greediest map in the map pool. I think Sarah's planning a very sneaky cheese. I, I wonder if he's going to try to break down this back door and sneak in here because that 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 is what this reeks of to me. Hero in the bottom left side appears to have gone uh, gas first again. I think so. He's already mined a fair bit of gas, so it looks like it is that way. No scouting for him. What a, an interesting uh, turn this has been. You know, it's surprising. I looked at the results between these two guys historically in between games, and Hero has not won that much, but they actually haven't played that much. They've only played like six or seven times, and Hero has beaten him uh, both in a best of one in a team league, and he's also beaten him in a best of three. So he's got a couple wins, still mostly Serral dominated, about two to one overall. But uh, one which, I, you know, I, I feel like they should have played in a few more big tournaments. But nope, Serral's got so many run-ins with, uh, with other big dogs, uh, with Dark, with Clem, with, uh, with Max Max, of course, with Rainer, and all the Europeans. Now, it looks like Hero's planning a very fast third with no scouting. This is very common. So, um, Radu Set Station, any of these big greedy maps uh, are all about two things. Number one, um, greed, and number two, all-ins to punish the greed. So, Hero is, is doing the classic, I'm going to be as greedy as possible because this map has a giant rush distance and it's hard to, to attack. And Serral's just going to cheese him. Now, I think we're going to see... Yeah, Lair. I was going to say, it's actually not going to be the rocks. He's just going to use Dropper Lords. So he's got one Overlord there. His other Overlords are moving across the map. Second one there, third one there. And they should be moving immediately all the way down. So he can uh, pick up here and drop there. I think is the shortest drop path. Maybe here to here as well is another short drop path, which is why that, that one's there. So basically, you Ling Flood the front. And then you drop at the same time. Um, you need lair tech to make drops, though. That's why he's making the lair. Second queen is on the way. Those 19 drones are still pumping. You could go Nidus Worm. Actually, this map's big enough. Why not just Nidus Worm? Nidus Worm's probably less complicated and easier. You do need a bit more gas mining to do it, but Serral has that gas banking up. His lair's about to finish, and he's almost got the 150 gas for the Nidus Worm, so I think that's really smart. Okay, Hero sees the Link Speed, though, and that is a pretty huge tell. Why the hell did he make Ling Speed? Hero should be full walling his base immediately, and he does. He full walls off the base very wise. He already loses a probe to those Zerglings, though. And now he's got to watch out for the Nidus Worm, which is going to be the last thing on his mind this early. Such a big all-in play from Serral. I don't think Hero can defend this. But I mean, maybe he can. Because I, I actually think those two Zerglings is a huge mistake. Even though he got some damage, I think it's a big mistake because it really tells him what's happening. Oracle flying across Hero. Hero, go home, mate. You're drunk. Hero, your, your Oracle needs to defend. You see Mass Zergling coming. Oh my god, the Nidus Worm. So there's a, yeah, there's a drop into the main. He needs 75 gas and the Nidus Worm is 12 seconds away. Oracle comes in, sees no workers on the natural. He confirmed that it's an all-in. Shield battery is going down. He needs one in that main base. He needs one over here, somewhere next to that Stargate or, or main mineral line. Lings are dropping in both back doors at once. They're attacking the pylon on the right side. Adepts and Oracle move there. That's a nice F2 for Hero. We know he likes to F2 those units around. He's got to be careful. That main base is about to be a problem. Here we go. Lings running into the main. The other Lings have all run home. They're going to try and pop into the Nidus and pop out that way. Queen's inside the main base already dropping creep. Lings pulling away from those Oracles. The Lings are going to go after the probes. The Queens will go after the Oracles. He's going to pop inside the Nidus Worm to try and save the Queens. Nice moves there for Serral. But oh, he accidentally popped out the low hit point Queen. Big mistake there. Nice probe pull with the Adepts. Does keep those Adepts alive, which is the most important part. Overlord goes down. The other one will fall soon as well. The Adepts need to survive. One of them does go down, but that Oracle energy really paying dividends as he does hold on. 22 probes go down. Serral is still building nothing but Zerglings. But now he no longer has a spotter other than the Creep Shimmer. He's going to pop it using the creep vision, but he doesn't have that many options of where else he can do it. The Void Ray killing those overlords, both dropper lords, is actually massive. Such a smart move for Hero. Realizing if he doesn't get rid of the overlords, Nidus Worms are going to be plaguing him all day. Serral is building a queen. He's building an overlord. Is he just going back to drones? 
Oh my god, he's in such a bad spot. But he knows Battery Overcharge can heal this gateway. He can't get through. You'd need to sacrifice like 10 lings to get him to activate Overcharge. Run away. Come back when Overcharge is done. And there's still two full energy batteries that can heal 600 life while this Stalker's Adepts and Oracle's hitting you from behind. Th there's no way. So I think Serral saving these units is actually the smart choice. Hero with an amazing hold though, with very little warning. Clears the creep, by the way, with the revelation from the Oracle. And his Oracles are going to counterattack. And this is where Serral's in big doo-doo. Because if those Oracles can kill a few drones and... Oh, for now, it looks like he's just focused on scouting. Third base has to be the priority here for Hero. He's still mining gas, which I find peculiar. I guess he's non-stop building oracles, that's why. So a lot of players... And he's going four gas. Wait, why is he doing that? Shouldn't he take a third? Okay, so Hero's choosing to focus on, on tech rather than economy. In a situation where he's so ahead, which means whatever he does with that tech needs to do damage to slow Serral down. Um... Oracles. Oh man, this is so bad for Serral. It's okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean the tech's worth it. The tech's worth it if you just kill every queen and kill all of his drones. The three oracles and the void ray are gonna kill every queen. The Nidus worm barely saving one of them. But look at that. Okay, he saves two of the queens. And then what? The oracles and the void ray are just gonna go ham. The oracles out of energy, actually. The oracles run out of energy. And there's a Nidus worm. Oh, a new overseer comes up with a Nidus worm to keep him back. Okay, that's actually really nice. Serral doesn't lose all of his drones. He's still down 11 workers, but he's going to spread creep in the back door, making it even harder. This, I guess, is why Hero didn't take that third base, realizing it was going to be hard to defend, and it would be a sore soft spot sitting out there in the open easy for his opponent to pick off. A few more pylons are building. I think this is enough gateway units potentially to fight this, but of course he doesn't want to take any risks. Serral is going to start droning behind it. He's on 33 workers, still no third base started. Serral is deep in desperation town. He's putting annoying creep tumors down right now. And you know when Serral's strategy isn't the peak of efficiency, it's not about, oh my god, I'm going to do this optimally, then this optimally, set up this level of the macro, pressure you while taking another base, add these upgrades, and then get this ultimate army. That's like a normal Serral game plan. What we're seeing here is Serral being like, oh god, um, uh, d distraction nidus? Um, uh, random creep tumor? Uh, I, I guess I drove up on two bases behind this before taking an incredibly late third? If Serral can bring it back from here, it's gonna be absolutely magical. Now, the only argument behind that is I've said many times Hero likes to go Stargate, uh, at really dumb times, like carriers, and then throw games because his carrier fights suck. I don't think that's gonna happen this time. Um, oracles. Oh, oh, two oracles for one queen. Great trade for Serral. Serral actually defends that time. Oh, but a few drones will go down. Three, four drones. I think that's worth it still for Hero. Because Hero is up at 51 probes against 33 drones. I think I think this sort of trading actually favors him. You don't want to throw any more of the oracles away, of course. You do want to save those, but it looks like the first two carriers are about to start up. And how the heck do you get back in this one? Oracle goes back in the main. I don't know if that got any extra workers there, but it looks like it will die unless he recalls it. Serral could just A-move those queens. That's actually not a corner you can hide on on this map, I don't think. I don't think you can get far enough away. Hydroden for Serral! Wow. Wow, so desperate. Oh my god, playing Hydras against Skytoss sucks, guys. <laughs> um, it's, it's interesting, right? Because if you get enough Hydras, if you have like an economy advantage, you sometimes can beat carriers, but it's because you produce faster. Once they get like six maybe eight carriers you're gonna need a insane hydra count a lot more supply and hydras than they have carriers to deal with that um unless you can maybe bait the interceptors out a few at a time and, and shoot them down before they're all launched that's the one the one thing that you can do four carriers coming out there's also a twilight and a forge so it looks like it'll probably be a charge archon after this hero should kill his gateway and take a fourth base as well there's no way he can die um in this game yeah there's a nidus out but he sees that Serral's trying to drone up now. His oracles are keeping him small, doing so much damage. Coming in again. Dude, Serral, Serral's dead in the water. You know Serral's shaking his head and he's just like, well, I am completely dead. If, if he wins this game from here, I mean, if, if, there's no way. Like, you know, if it was Dark and Hero, maybe. I feel like Dark's a king of comebacks enough. And Hero is a King of Throws enough that you combine those two and, and either of them is capable of either throwing or making a comeback at any moment. I don't know if Serral Hero has that same combo mechanic, you know. I don't I don't think so. Um, I, I'd love to see, of course, a cool idea. I, I don't see anything from Serral that has any chance of getting him back in this game. No offense. There's not a lot of good choices for him. I just don't see this. I'm looking for him to do a strategy that takes him from 0% here to 3% chance of winning. 
going for double evo hydras and overlord speed is not that i mean maybe you can survive with microbial shroud i guess but it's it's the long shot of all long shots and with no infestation pit yet he isn't showing any sign of wanting to do that so it looks like Hiro's going to expand down this right side of the map which is a little bit bizarre I guess he wants a, a closer push path towards his opponent. He's taking forever to take a fourth. He could be on 85 workers by now, but I guess if he just wants to max out on 70 probes, then it, this can work. He's going double forge again. Hero is oddly obsessed with double forge today. Like, I remember the Europeans were just so obsessed with double forge for a while, but I guess Hero has been having success with it lately and he's decided to keep doing it. Not entirely surprising in of itself, but... No, it is. It is. I, I'm trying to make great reasons for it, but it is. He's also going double Templar Archives. He's going to take the gold base now. Hasn't started building it just yet. Serral is still just kind of lumping along on 58 drones. Barely drones his third. He's so worried about dying. He's already built six Hydras, ten Queens. He's still making just Queen Hydra. Uh, well, Queen Hydra, if the Queens are tanking, they could do okay against carriers. Carapace upgrades really help. He's going to go Neuroparasite. Yeah, that's a comeback mechanic. That is a comeback mechanic. Unfortunately, it's in Vision of an Oracle that he's, he's literally upgrading this, so not the biggest surprise. Uh, there should plenty be plenty of detection with two Observers already on the map here. And Hero, he's kind of chilling. He's taking a long time to build up. I do think I would like to see a timing attack or something in mind. He's going to go everything. He's just playing a late game. He's giving Serral a lot of time and, and entirely unnecessarily. Remember that Hero's late game is okay. Serral's late game is, is one of the best, if not the best, CVP in the world when it comes to, to late game and end game. So, wasting time on a second forge when your army is mostly uh, makes no sense, um, or makes very little sense. Uh, people get angry at me for being harsh, but, you know, I, I stand by it. When it, when it <laughs> I 100% think this is a dumb follow up for her. <laughs> like, what's the double forge helping? A few adepts and stalkers. He's got nine gateways, but what's he going to do with it? Build archons? Archons don't benefit from ground armor. Zealots will help a bit, but he's also only got three High Templar. If we're making Storm, I wouldn't mind five, six, seven, especially seeing the Hydra and Festa. Oracle does come in on the top right. Stasis Trap into three drone kills. Very nicely done. Oracle's so close to dead, though. The Hydras will intercept it. Nice move for Serral. Shuts that one down. All right, we've got some units moving up to take the left watchtower. Robo Bay's on the way, as well as double Oracle for Hero. Kira, what are, you, what are we doing right now? I, I, he's, he's playing really totally, but he's also not playing greedy. If you're going to defend, you need to push your greed and tech. But now he's, he's just building a little bit of everything. He's just sitting here making cannons. Hero, I mean, I love his ability to play greed, greedy sometimes. I talk about Hero being the best Protoss in the world in the past because he'd swap between extreme all-ins and doing a bit of aggression into being super greedy behind it. But... He always then uses that that greed to turn it into momentum. And he's not doing that in this game. And I know it's hard to attack in this game, but he's had such a massive lead. The supply is now very similar. He's doing a bit of zealot harass, which is in of itself not the worst thing, but he's not microing it very well as they single file through the minerals to attack the hydras. He does get a hatchery cancel, which is something. Almost loses the prism in the process, though. What are we doing microing a prism with zealots right now? He's building two disruptors, plus three air weapons, plus one plasma shields. I think I think he's just trying to make it exciting. Serral's going ultra Hydra Ling with mass neural parasite infestors. So people are always like, why don't people do this more when they're behind? And I'm like, oh, you absolutely we like pros should do this more. Serral should do this more often. The neural parasite comeback is a great move. It actually working is a one in a million, and it, it's gonna rely on him executing very well and also Hiro screwing the pooch. Hero's already messed up really bad on his build follow-up by basically just sitting here and building static defense and letting his his lead slowly evaporate. Serral has played so cautiously. He keeps expecting Hero to attack him and Hero just doesn't. Now you could argue, well, yeah, Hero's playing against his image. He is, but he's not rushing to a, a late game army. Why is he massing static defense? He should be rushing to an army, clearing creep and keeping Serral on four bases. Like I I know I'm, I'm right now kind of shouting rather than casting, but this is one of those things we see from Hero once in a while, where he goes from the, the most genius play to just absolute nonsense. And strategically, what he's doing right now is nonsense. The man is often a tactical mastermind. But right now, he's often a strategic mastermind. Right now, this build does not make sense. It's a very complicated army. I do like that he's pushing now. He's got to reveal the infestors. Where are they? I think the infestors are up north, guys. There we go. Okay. If he can revelate those infestors, 
because he knows there's investors out and, and stop them stealing, say, his disruptors and carriers, he can definitely do well. Problem, there's Ultras coming out. Ultras is actually genius from Serral. Get this. They don't have melee. It doesn't matter. They don't need melee. Kindness plating and plus one melee will finish in about 30 seconds, but even without it, what's going to kill them? A couple of Archons, Stalkers and Adepts? Definitely not. They will wreck Disruptors. They will wreck High Templar. And he reveals the Ultra Hydra. He doesn't see the Infestors yet. They're hiding behind the Mineral Line. Great defense by Serral. He's hiding his army. He's biding his time. And Hero doesn't want to run Disruptors and High Templar into that scenario. Now, Hero has a few useless units. Three Adepts and three Stalkers are doing nothing in this army. He should kill those. He's already got three Supply and Observers. He's got six Supply and Oracles. And four Supply and Avoid Ray, which is not particularly useful. So having that as well as the 12 Supply and, and Adept Stalker really matters. You might be wondering why. Well, several's lower on workers, which means he has more army than him. It's not the highest quality army, but if you can get a few more units, there we go, there we go. Hero kills the Adepts and the Stalkers, realizing that they're worthless to squeeze a few more Immortals. If you can get out four Immortals, you can kill the Ultras pretty fast. Mass Transfuse, Microbial Shroud, and of course, Neuroparasite, all gonna be potentially big playmakers in this game. The Observer's looking for those Infestors right now, but the Overseers spot him. Plus one Air Weapons is on the way, plus three Air Weapons is already done. Oof, I'm really wondering right now what uh, what Rotterdam and some of the other people who cast this game live, and, and it was just last night when this was played live, by the way. It was, it was in the middle of the night for me. So I'm casting it off replays the following day. Oh, big disruptor shots come out. Oh my god, those queens just got bounced onto that cliff. Good shot to start. There's still plenty of queen energy in there. Queens aren't the best supply. Corruptor Viper's trying to be built right now. Serral's Infestors have been revealed. I do think Hero... Mixture of feedback, storms, disruptor shots should be able to take this out. It's always scary pushing on creep, though. Easier to push in, in theory, than it is to actually execute it. Especially with all that creep giving a big movement boost to the Zerg. Hero's only on five bases, can you believe it? 17 minutes in with the lead he had, he could have had seven bases covered in cannon battery by now if he was going to play the slower style. Definitely slow to consume the map, slow to pressure. But he's got a great army question is can he use it correctly i've seen trap use an army like this to perfection years ago i've seen parting look half decent with it i've seen zest look okay with it i've never seen hero look anything other than terrible with a carrier army and I, I i hate to be so scathing but i think he's one of the best mid game players his carrier micro usually is not good i, I so far his disruptor shots have been great when he's just using high templar they're usually great as well so i i really feel as long as he just A moves the carrier, it's probably not the end of the world as long as they don't get abducted, but it's all about managing the High Templar Disruptor underneath. That's what's going to potentially allow him to win. 14 gateways up, two more building. He's got more Robos coming as well. Four Robos. I think he's got a few gateways transforming. So yeah, you can see 16 gateways right now transformed into warp gates. Uh oh, careful. Cheryl's going for it. Cheryl's going. Nope. And the Disruptor shot scare him back. Oh, here we go. Vipers. Uh, but not able to abduct just yet. Serral's slowly growing that corrupt account. He's only got... He does actually have two spires, but he's only got plus one air attack, uh, armor so far. Plus one air attack is about to come in. There's such a big air upgrade advantage. That's why Hero, like, taking longer is also letting his, his upgrade lead slip away as well. Serral's slowly banking up resources the longer this goes, even though Serral's been down on workers the whole time. Oh, decent disruptor shot. Another one as well. Crazy thing is, if you look at his army, he does have High Templar on two, Disruptors on three. Everything else is manually being controlled. Changelings come in. He's going to shift click those down. Nicely done. You don't want to give Serral free vision here. Serral has six Ultras. Five Immortals will take care of them pretty well. No Queens in the army right now. Oracle does get taken out by a Duct there. And abandoning the gold base, a wise choice for Serral. Plus two air armor, plus three plasma shields, and plus two ground armor, all on the way for Hero. This sort of marauding around denying bases is what I wanted to see five or eight minutes ago, but he's got there in the end, and I do like that he's he's kind of keeping several contained on an even base count with the Protoss. He does have a much bigger bank to, uh, to call on as well. In general, if you're this far ahead, going air is always a mistake, guys. Um, I just realized the analogy is basically... If you're in a uh, an MMA fight, and uh, if you watch that and you see when they wobble the guy, 
and then they, they tackle him and start wrestling him rather than continuing to punch him in the face. That basically gives him time for his brain to recover. That's what Hero's done in this game as he gets massively surrounded. Oh my god! Fungal Parasitic Bomb covers the army. Neural Parasites go into a bunch of the units. Hydras and Corruptors are clearing what is left of the carriers. The Ultras obliterated the Disruptor High Templar. We will be rewatching that fight at the end of this game. Several has not got much bank though. He does kill the Observers. <sighs> Hero, Hero's gonna have to remax, but he kept four carriers alive. Oh, he made Stalkers. Oh, don't make Stalkers. Stalkers are trash. He also doesn't have Blink for these Stalkers, guys. He, I guess he did it just to defend them, but Hero right now, he's got good upgrades on them at least uh, with the attack armor and shields, but first time he goes to Blink, he's gonna realize and he's gonna have to go home, find that Twilight Council and click that Blink upgrade, which he hasn't done yet. There we go. There we go. Plus three plasma shields coming in. Yeah, sorry. Um, that, that, that analogy, I think, really holds up, though. Um, you're so far ahead, but if you give him a few minutes, uh, a player who's lost, you know, failed an all-in, you, you literally saw he had, like, four drones on his natural when yours was full. He then failed another Nidus Worm. Like, like, Hero was so far ahead in this game. And he's just, and he's just said, no, 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 let's slow the fight down. It's like, all you need to do is speed it up and keep fighting. You're going to win. You've got so much more money than he does. But he's let it get to the point where they're maxed out. They're both butting into their supply cap, and that accounted for nothing. It's Mass Ultra right now. He's got Mass Stalker. He warped in more Stalkers. Why would you make more Stalkers at this stage? Oh, my God. And push on Creep pre-blink. He's losing late game to Ultra Corruptor. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, my Lord. Hero. Oh my lord, one day my favorite player, the next day one that's a little painful to watch. I, ah oh man, he did kill most of the Ultras. The Immortal's doing okay, but he still doesn't have Blink pushing in here against Zerglings is crazy. He gets one of the Ultras, but he's feeding units into the meat grinder. Serral has been 3,000 units, lost more effective. That being said, Hero might just have the momentum. The, the Hero could have done this minutes ago and just stayed on the ground army, kept fighting. And this is how you leverage an advantage. Look, Serral's barely hanging on now. Even though he gets one of those carries, the other one recalls. This base almost goes down, not quite. Good defense by Serral. He will be able to clean up those Zealots, but they're putting up a good account of themselves because they are 3-3-2 three, three, Zealots. That being said, 2-3, Adrenal Zerglings, not too bad either. Zealots down here trying to pull back to the cannons. Corruptors trying to bypass there. They're going to unzip their flies and go wee-wee on that base. Nothing that shoots up here. So that Nexus will go down. Hero only on five bases, so his mining's not as high as it could be. He's actually, he's mined out on all of his bases, guys. He's mined out on almost all of his bases. He didn't keep expanding like I pointed out. Finding himself in a championship hero and instinctive player a player who makes it up on the fly a player who is fueled by his need to make his opponents frustrated and uh unfortunately he uh he has really dropped the ball here on rad set station a massive opportunity after holding serral's all in it was a clever all in from serral but serral showing link speed early gave away what he was up to and uh i really think hero just did a great job of pulling all of his units together to defend serral also only having two queens against two oracles was, uh, was not quite right. You need to fight away from those oracles. Let them run out of energy, I think, a little bit first. Stalker, Zealot, Immortal coming in. He's got a bunch of High Templar with Storm as well as Archons. This is actually such a scary army for Serral to deal with. But he's got Broodlords. I was going to say, as long as he has Broodlords, he could deal with it. But I didn't, I didn't think he had Broods up yet. He does have them. The High Templar start to fall there. Yeah, you can carry with the Broodlords. Killing a base, though, is great. Serral is only on 50 drones. He has to retake this base and play the most efficient game ever. And honestly, you see Broodlords, you know right now as Hero, you have to split your army up and just keep counterattacking. Kill the gold base, drop that back door, and then the other half of the army keeps attacking down here. Half your army could even just run up into the natural while this half stays down here. But he's just blinking at it. He's fighting head on into Broodlord Infesta, which is a madman's move. It is a crazy thing to do. The Lings, oh, the Lings find the bottom base. So Hero feels like he's got a fight right now. That means he's pushing through a choke point into Infesta Broodlord though. He's rallying his whole probe line towards the Zerglings. Oh my lord! Serral is pulling a rabbit out of the hat. He's looked untouchable this tournament so far. And I thought we were about to see the series closing up. But my god, look at this. Killing hatcheries is, is good, but you're not killing the army. And that's the problem. Look at the efficiency. 5,000 resources more efficient. You're both mining jackal at this point. It's actually Serral who has the advantage, especially if he gets that gold base saturated. 41 drones against 46. The mass cannon and battery that he invested in when he should have been pushing and winning the game is absolutely confounding. You've got to wonder 
why why did he invest thousands of minerals in cannons and batteries when he was way ahead of his opponent those are things you add once you're already you know maxed out and turtling but uh just just confusing decisions being made by hero in this game and they're going to cost him big time Oh, watch out for the fungals! Okay, okay, Sarah really wants to hold onto the gold base. I don't think he needs to. I think he just needs to get rid of the prism to get rid of the, uh, the, the feedback threat. Pull the drones away and do not lose your army. Yeah, look at that. Okay, fungal doesn't quite land there. Remember, fungal's a bit shorter range than it used to be, but he catches a few units. And if you stop them from retreating, the broodlords will finish them off. Two stalkers, an immortal, and an archon. I think Cloak is about to run out because that's only an activatable ability that lasts for 20 seconds, guys. Another Fungal lands there. That Archon and Zealot taking a lot of damage. Whoo! Several. Lots of Zerglings in the bottom right. He's got Lings burrowed everywhere else, denying those bases from getting up. And Hero. He's got a big scary army, but it is a basic army. It's not one that's going to gain value. It, 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 it has mobility. He's got good storms. He's got the Mummer in the single carrier. Just add a little bit of weird variety to it, but it's mostly Stalkers. A few Immortals and Archons, a few Zealots, and a few High Templar. That is not a late game army. Like I said, if he attacks up here with the Prism Harassers and keeps denying the bases down here and in the middle with a second army, he definitely could do pretty well. Um, the secret is multi-prong. There is no ground army for Serral. He can't afford Hydras. He's only got Lings, which sucks against Zealot Archon. His only strength is fighting front on. If Hero splits his army and attacks two or three places, I very much believe he can win this game. Because the income's still close enough, and even though Serral's is better, if you just deny one of these bases, or they're going to mine out soon anyway, actually, so you don't necessarily need to, um, and just keep attacking multiple angles, you know, you're not going to let him do it. But if you attack front on into Broodlord Infested, that is a fool's errand. That is a crazy move. Oh my god, the fungal is massive. The fungal spore crawler killing multiple observers. Oracle, warp prisms, all taking epic damage. The corruptors will finish off that warp prism. Now the broodlords are getting jumped on. Great fungals. A blinding cloud goes down from the vipers as well. The broodlords are stutter stepping back. That is 15 broodlords. The last thing you do is headbutt into mass broodlord infester hero has made just about every decision wrong in this game. He has played strategically, just completely the opposite of the fundamentals. He has pushed when he should have split up, uh, or pushed when he should have defended. He's defended when he should have pushed, and he, he's, he's, he's decided to fight front on when he should have split up and harried his opponent on the sides. It's uh, unfortunate to see, and it's going to be a big confidence hit to Hero, but it's also a very Hero-esque thing to do. This is the man who lost a GSL a year ago because he uh, let Solar do 14 Zergling runbys to him in one game. Even after the first 12 Zergling runbys, he was still in a good position and could have won the game, but the last two Zergling runbys let him in because he just never walled his base off and he never left a unit in the wall. Hero is a confounding player. He is so fascinating to watch because he's so unpredictable, but uh, this one has definitely got me scratching my head to come up with any justification for how he's played this game. I do feel bad being harsh to players because sometimes our brains switch off and we, we go on autopilot or we sense something will work and our instincts are just wrong. And normally you do want to try and trust your instincts and, and try to be able to just intuit, I think this can work and do it and trust in it. Unfortunately there for Hero, there was just so many moments where it was the opposite of that and uh, I uh, have to call it like I see it. And um, yeah, just very bad play. I wanted to look at that first big fight where his army got cleared one more time, guys, because I really thought that was an interesting fight in that Serral set it up very nicely. Um, let's take a look at this. It's just over here where he gets surrounded. This is it. So notice Serral splits his army to come from two sides. Hero doesn't really have vision of the army. He's, he's lost, I believe he lost uh, both of his oracles while moving around the map. So he doesn't have any revelation and Serral knows this. So he realizes this is my moment to catch him not, not prepared. And the infestors run forward. Disruptor shot does take out two of them, but he lands some good fungals, comes in with a good surround. And you can already see there, the vipers do get feedbacked, but the Protoss has pulled into a tiny ball. And in this case, he probably should have just recalled here. He's gonna lose most of his ground units, but you're so caught off guard. I think it's best to snap recall in these scenarios, lose 30 supply, 40 supply, and just rebuild it and then take a better fight next time. But uh, I, I think we've seen a parasitic bomb. Did we see a blinding cloud or was it just one or two parasitic bombs? I'm not quite sure. We'll, we'll kind of pause and play here a little bit. Uh, it looks like a microbial shroud went down here as well. So there was a microbial shroud on the ground units. 
and another one down here, I believe. I think there's some orange here. It looks like there's some orange. Yeah, yeah. So I think it just started there. So he's got two micro boost shrouds. We've got parasitic bombs hitting every single air unit. The corruptors, you'll notice, are flying on top. A second parasitic bomb just hit in the middle. So the reason here is if the interceptors are attacking the corruptors, the interceptors will die to the parasitic bombs. That's why these corruptors are flying in. And I think this move is huge because if we watch that interceptor count, there's 58 right now. 43, 20, 16. So they all get killed by the parasitic bomb. All the corruptors are gone at this point, all but three. But you've basically removed all of the damage of those carriers, which is huge. And Immortals, very good against Ultras, but the Immortals and the Archons weren't tanking. He's still got four Immortals and an Archon left, and he's lost most of his High Templar and Disruptors. So this was a really nice fight for Serral. It was a desperate situation. He needed a good fight, because Ultra, Hydra, Corruptor is definitely not the ultimate late game army for Zerg, um, but he, he utilized the Infestors, the eight Infestors, and of course those uh those vipers with the parasitic bombs to actually make it work out so hats off to Cyril, man that was impressive up in the top left we've got basilisk Cyril. it's hard lead in the bottom right we've got dragon kaisy gaming's hero i'm not going to talk too much about that game going forwards because i think i was already very harsh uh justifiably harsh but you know it's it's kind of sad to, to talk about it i'm sure hero wants to forget that game happened as well so it is unfortunate. We'll just leave it at the fact that this should be a 2-1 to one right now in favor of Serral still, but now it is a 3-0. And uh, that is such a big advantage. So 14 Hatchery goes down. This is interesting. So Serral was anticipating Hero trying to send a probe across at the very start to block his Hatchery. So instead of 15-15, he's doing 14 Hatchery, 15 Spawning Pool. Slightly less economic and efficient, uh, but it would have been fantastic if Hero was going for that. Hero is not, though. Hero, I believe is doing the same build from game one. So he's going over there. I think he's going to build a gateway, like pylon and gateway over here, I guess. Oh, it's a cannon rush. Oh, and he's building it behind the wall off so that it gets scouted a little bit later. Oh, hello. Oh, old school, baby. Gateway gas. It's a 19 probe cannon rush. It's one of the delayed ones. Um. Okay. Well, the overlord will see it in about... 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds for Serral. I think it's, I think he has to cancel the hatchery or if he lets it finish, actually this is gonna, he's, he's not gonna see it in time to cancel the hatchery, is he? He'll have to make that decision instantly if he wants to. He's got five seconds to choose. Ooh, he's gonna see these two cannons, three cannons. Cancel? No. Okay, so he chooses to let it finish. Now, I've heard a few of the European pros say it's worth it because otherwise they cancel the cannons. By letting the hatchery finish, you at least let them... Oh my god, wait, wait. He didn't wall the cannons in. Oh my god. You're not meant to pull drones because they're meant to wall the cannons in. But Hero just assumed he wouldn't do it. He's just trying to do it with mass cannons. This is a Silver League cannon rush. He doesn't even cancel the cannon. It goes down. Oh no. Terribly placed cannon rush. The cannons are all dying. Whoa, what is going on today, Hero? This is an absolute disaster. Oh, he's lost. He's just lost confidence after that last game. I mean, this is two games in a row where, where the build should have been good. But like, yeah, you're meant to wall off with a gateway or something to stop those cannons getting surrounded. He just chucked them down anywhere. This is a strategy which he clearly did not practice. There's no other way to say it. He, th he thought of it and said, this will be a good idea to catch him off guard but he didn't practice it on this map. He didn't practice where to place those buildings and he panicked under pressure and didn't even cancel the cannons that were building or even attempt to throw up an emergency wall off. That was an appalling execution of a cannon rush and it's unfortunate because, you know, we've seen such great plays out of Hero this tournament with his trademark style of aggression and, you know, odd builds that he comes up with himself and so much fun. But uh, I think the pressure of this moment and facing someone like Sarah is just such an intimidation factor as well because he's just got such a good record of adapting to his opponents. You know, he, he doesn't let you just pick a good strategy to counter him. He, he adapts to you. He finds ways to make you uncomfortable as well. Now we're going to go for a proxy in the follow-up of this, but it really is plan C as uh, Serral's up on 24 drones. And well, he doesn't have a gas at least. He did have to pull a lot of drones, but eh, I guess we killed five of them. Third base only just started. Maybe maybe we end up in an okay spot here just because obviously Serral scouted it so late. Pulling drones was a, a pretty big gamble, man. I'm actually amazed Serral did it. Because you, you, you'd you look at it and you'd think, oh, of course he's going to be fine, like, walling off. But maybe Serral just looked at the positioning and realized 
There's no good wall offs here. This is not really a good spot to cannon rush. It's either that or he just rolled the dice and uh, and happened to come up uh, come up a little bit lucky there that yes, indeed, Hero did not know those spots. It is a proxy Stargate, so Hero's going to try to get those oracles in a little bit earlier than normal, as well as making that Stargate unscoutable. When you do this, you could save two oracles, then you can one-shot the drones. I'd say it's probably a little more reliable than doing uh, a single oracle, but that first oracle does have a higher chance, especially if your adepts can uh, can lure the queens to the third base. They can dive in that natural, kill six or seven workers, and be a very good start. All right, what do we got going on? Uh, 50, 45 out of 54. I'm, I'm worried that with this messy start, Hero's going to forget his next pylon because these are the sort of games where it's very easy to forget those little details. All right, Adepts cancel their shade. They're just poking into the third. Can try to focus down Lava as they come out, Zerglings or Drones. The Oracles are waiting. He's going to wait for the two. He's keeping up pressure really nicely. Hero's going to try and play this out. If there was ever a man to screw up at the start and then come out on top anyway and, and find a way back into the game, it's going to be Hero. I have faith in this man. I've, I've, I've let it all out. I let out all my criticisms. Right now, he's playing proper StarCraft. The, the proxy Stargate does kind of suck because if it gets found by Serral, you, you can't go Phoenix reactively against Muters. That's one of the big plays, which I think Serral should have baked into his muscle memory and into his brain. Oh, all right, double oracles, one, two. Only two drones, three queens in position. There's three in the main as well. Great positioning by Serral. That's a dead oracle. Oh, he gets it. Only four, five drone kills. Loses an oracle, second one does take a bunch of damage. As Serral knows. Serral knows about it because he scouted the mains empty. So check this out. He's going to he's gonna clean up the Stargate. <laughs> uh, Hero here trying to be very sneaky. He does have two gateways at home. He, I don't think there's any space for Adepts to warp in behind that though. That Oracle needs to turn around if he wants to save the Stargate. Zergling's pulling back right now as the Oracles move around. We've got Adepts down here on the south. Five Adepts on this map. Double Extractor goes down to avoid those drones dying to the Oracle. Gateway does get cancelled. He's trying to wait for those drones to cancel out of that, but with the queens to save it, he has to back off. Hero's going for the latest glaives plus one timing. Oh! Oh! Oh, Hero's doing a maples. But it's off such a weird, weird start. He's doing a seven gate plus one glaive adapt timing. Super weird. Plus one doesn't really help you against uh, light units. It helps you against roaches, queens, and buildings. Ooh, okay. Does take out a few Zerglings. Good shade away. Can the Oracles get damage to stack with it? Looks like the answer is not really. 11 drones and 15 Zerglings have gone down in this game. Still, the early game, of course, was so bad cost efficiency wise for Hero that it is still a massive uh, units lost trading advantage for Serral. Serral's still up eight workers as well. Ling's going to try and cancel that third base. The Adepts are very fragile, but they will be able to defend. Serral just keeps building roaches from here. He's safe, but he doesn't actually have an Overseer scout. He's so busy dealing with the Oracles, the Adepts, all the annoyances of Hero. Oh, he does have an Overseer. Oh, smart boy. He's going to see this just in time. Mass Adept is warping in out front. He should see. He sees the extra gateways. He sees an Adept shading out. I think he's going to realize, yeah, Ling see the Mass Adept. He's got 14 roaches already. 14! He's got the hard counter to this easily. I mean, he doesn't have roach speed just yet, so maybe there's an opportunity, but this is going to be so hard for Hero to get anything done. The Adept Shades are going to go forwards. We've got Zerglings going after the pylon. The Adept will in at home as well, but that's more Adepts that are more useless units. Oh no, he finishes the Shade! This is the worst use for these Adepts right now. He needs to keep them alive to at least try and pin back the Roaches, threaten the runbys. I do like the drone focus though. Great drone focus fire. Great drone focus fire. Shades into the main as well. Gets a few more. Good micro to make the best of a bad situation. Hero is a beast when it comes to the clickety-clack of StarCraft. Adept Shade into the natural base. He's going to try and focus down a few of these drones. Nine workers. Ten. That's all he brings it up to, guys. Ten drones and a bit of mining time for 15 Adepts. That's what we call a nope. That's a not good enough. That is a very, very bad... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oracle comes back in, gets a few more drones in the main. That is nice. But how do you stop this roach attack? 34 roaches against six stalkers. I'm not very good at maths, but I think I can figure that one out. Uh, this is a problem. No shield battery up. It is exposed at the front. The one that's building, it goes down before it can finish. Blink isn't even done yet, so stutter stepping stalkers normally pretty good against slow roaches, not against speed roaches with zerglings rallying in. 
The Oracles have both been F2'd home as well. They both died to Queens. And Hero has to tap out. Serral, one game away. Well, this is just disgusting. I did not think we were going to be going into a one-sided 5-0, but as we go into Alcyon, that is what everything is pointed to. Serral in the top right side playing for Basilisk, looking like a monster this series. Looks like he's gone back to the 15 hatchery 15 pool. Hero in the bottom left is not going to block him. Once again, going for that pylon in the wall off. This time, though, it's going to be the choke point on the other side, which I don't think makes sense because I think you want to take this third base here. And uh, you might say, well, why doesn't he just do the choke point there? You know, leave a little space. No, because then you can't fit the cyber core on the other side. The power won't, won't reach. And it won't line up either. But um, yeah, so so this is definitely... Um, it's going to be one of his weirder wall offs. Where is he going to put... Oh, is he going to wall off with a third structure later, I think? Okay. I'm like looking at this and I'm like... Where even does the cyber core go? Unless he wants to full wall it, which I don't think he does. What do you do as hero? As hero, I think you go back to basics here. I think you've 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 played so much silly stuff, and things have gone very awry for you. Um, yeah, those last two games were disasters, and and they were the two where he had the winning strategies as well. That's it's kind of crazy because the first few games they weren't bad for hero. I don't think. I think Serral just kind of got ahead and. You know, great scouting against the proxy gate strat and all that sort of stuff and hard to get under his skin. Oh, okay, so you can build the cyber core kind of recessed and it does have the choke point above it. Really hard to wall off with an adept in that spot and have it placed correctly so Zerglings can't run in because of the, the kind of shape of the, the top block. So that's, it's one of the worst ling blocking wall offs, but we know that Hero usually doesn't even leave a unit in his wall. So if anyone's going to do it, he's the one that should be doing it. Um, <laughs> gold base has been scouted. But, uh, of course, no one's gone for it. So, Hero was just checking that Serral wasn't being a greedy boy. Serral going for a quicker link speed this time around. No more of these gasless shenanigans. He's gotten away with enough of that for one series. Oh, Stalker first for Hero. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see Australia's double robo build. I don't think we'll see it. I, it's, it's pretty rare. We've seen it beat Scarlet. We've seen it beat a few other people. But uh, he has a build where he goes Stalker first, tries to kill the Overlord, and then does that now. Hero is going to try and... He sh I really feel he should move to the other side and try to shoot it in the wrong direction, but... Hero never does that move. I think he just thinks so highly of Serral that he kind of thinks Serral's always watching. And about half the time, he is right. Oh, the Zergling! Is he going to get the scout off? It's going to get the scout! Oh, no! Oh, he sees the robo started, and that tells you all you need to know. Technically, there could be a Stargate on the way, and it's a fake Robo. He just showed you it to fake you out. But usually it means it's Twilight into Robo. It's either Glaive Adept or Dark Templar. Uh, either one of those, the response is going to be, of course, to get a Roach Warren somewhere between 3.30 and 4 minutes. Put back on gas and uh, basically just get out a bunch of ground fighting units to defend you. Skip Spore Crawlers. You don't need as many Queens against that style, though some players still do like to build many. It's a ground as opposed to an air focus for the early Zerg defense. Okay, what else can we do here, man? What else can we do, hero? It's going to be four gate. He pulled one off gas, but only one. I was wondering how committed this was. This doesn't feel like one of the super optimized timings. Um... Zaun was the guy who had a really brutal timing back in the day. Off 32 probes. There's going to be a 36 probe. Warp Prism coming out at 4 minutes. Which is pretty standard. Link Speed is now finished, by the way. Warp Prism's coming out. Adepts are going to join in. Not stopping to kill the Overlord on the high ground. It's all about momentum. You can kill that with the Observer. But he's not rallying it to the high ground, unfortunately. I think that's one of the best things you can do here is rally the Observer over. Kill that. Because that really keeps the Zerg in the dark on what you're doing behind this. Third gas is up. Probes are on the way. Hasn't played against the Twilight Glaives opening yet today. So Serral will be, uh, I guess, practicing something new here. Something a little bit different. Hasn't played against tonight. Oh. Adept Shade does cancel. Adept's moving into that third base. 39 workers for Serral. 40 probes for Hero. Hero's job here is actually not to do a massive amount of damage. It's to force an overreaction. Oh, he's building an Immortal. 
on two base. Okay, so Hero's going to do an all-in behind this. Most likely, it's not 100%, quite likely. He's not probing. He's not building a fourth gas. He is fighting, though. He keeps canceling the shade at the last second. Oh, the Evo Chamber, Spore Crawler, Wall Off. Sarah loves using that maneuver. Uh-oh, I don't think he has enough units at the front, though. I don't think he has enough units at the front. I notice he uproots the Spore Crawler. The idea is you can root that whenever you see the shade coming. And it will block them. You just got to be careful it doesn't get pushed too far out of position. That spore crawler is a little out of the way right now. Seven more roaches are building. It is 38 drone double gas roach production. And we've got two pylons building behind this. The spore crawler does root in time. The adepts are blocked. The roaches are there fighting. The lings should probably help for Serral, but he doesn't want to risk losing them all because the adepts do so much bonus damage to Zerglings. And look at that, keeping the lings alive. Probably a good idea so that he can actually move to the high ground. Adepts redropping on the low ground there. It looks like a fantastic cleanup for Serral. Ahead 50% in the units lost. Now, keep in mind, Hero has actually done okay but uh, in his economy because he's up three workers, but that means no fourth gas. And of course, he's building two immortals at home. He's also rallying them to the front. Luckily, the Overlord hasn't seen them, but having the choke on this side of the wall off also makes it so easy for him to see the move out. This is uh, an unfortunate base placement. He's faking taking a third now. But it truly is a fake. If he can convince Serral this is real, that'll be really big. The Zergling goes down. Doesn't even start a Nexus just yet because, of course, it is a fake. It's a massive Adept Immortal all-in, guys. Three Immortals and Mass Adepts is what it's going to be. Morphism Harassment on the front. Desperately trying to keep Serral off balance. He knows that if Serral's cool, calm, and collected, he'll pretty much always see what's coming. The Overlord is going to see the army moving out. He knows what's happening. Serral needs to go into mass roach production. He's going to kill the third base. That gets cancelled. Not the end of the world. This is... It's maybe not a complete all-in, but it's, it's the next best thing. It's mass adapts, a few immortals. Now, often what you can do is you can shade up the ramp and unload the immortals on the high ground with the adepts and fight the Zerg as they funnel back up their own main ramp. That's one cool thing you can do. Uh, you could basically just move around. Normally, you only do this with two immortals. He's building a third Nexus again. He did build a couple more probes. He's taking the third on the other side now. We do see a Zergling going to be slowly picking at the pylon on that side. Roach Ravager trying to defend. There is no Roach Speed. Lair is up, but it's Mass Adept and Immortals going for it. I wouldn't mind a commitment here. He does indeed commit to the Shade. Those Immortals will go after those Roaches. Maybe Shading on top, not the best idea though, because now the Lings can deal with the uh, Immortals. Ah, it's a lot of lost DPS. Whenever those Immortals aren't shooting Roaches, yeah, the Shade there may not have been the best decision for Hero. He does at least force Serral to fight, though. Takes out two drones behind the natural. The Adepts are there looking pretty good. The three Immortals fighting their hearts out right now. Let's see what they can pull off. The Immortals trying to fight. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Nice hot pickups. Uh, Adepts are shading into the main as well. They're going to find big damage if they turn it fight. But unfortunately, he's too busy microing at the front. Picks off another Roach down there and another Zergling. Those two Adepts, they do at least force a bit of mining time and take out an extra Zergling or two before they go down. Observer pulls back. There's a forge on the way behind this. Third base is finished. Hero is up six workers. He's found a lead off of this, but kind of scary having four immortals on the other side of the map. You can only pick up two of those at a time into this warp prism. He's going to keep trading. Roach speed still has not started for Serral. He's been on the back foot this whole time. He's now down 600 resources in the, in the units lost. Immortals have 11 kills, 9 kills, and 0 kills. Spork roller does go down. Those depths should definitely not shade. Oh, wait, maybe they should actually. Serral splitting his army up, trying to be ready on both sides at once. The Immortal's trying to kite backwards, but good micro from Serral. Does push back the Warp Prism for now. The Immortal Adept continuing. Five Immortals on the front line. He's got to dodge those Biles. Takes a few big ones onto the Adepts. The Immortal's still looking very healthy in the back line. The Ravages and Queens starting to fall. This is looking rough. Serral comes in with a flank, though. Where the heck did that come from? Zerglings from behind in the rear with the Bitey Boy gear. Five Immortals are still alive. Lovely Warp is a micro from Hero. He just will not let them die. He walks into the Biles, though, trying to save them. And he does end up losing four Immortals as that one on the left goes down as well to the Zerglings. A uh, terrible start for Serral, but he does finish it up in style and actually closes the gap on the units lost. Now ahead in that regard, Hero has almost no units at home. Uh, immortal in the wall, a few Stalkers at the third. He's up 15 workers, though. So as long as he can keep Serral distracted with the drop, Serral doesn't have Roach Speed. He can't counterattack. He doesn't have a Spire. And I do believe Hero can transition from here. Hero is panicky right now, though. He is playing a messy, intuitive game of StarCraft. He's building two Robo Bays. One in the main, one in the natural, just a few seconds apart, which tells us he is just clicking things with panic. This was not mapped out this far into the game. He's feeling his way in the dark. I think he's got a good feel for it. 
Robo Bay will be pretty decent, but no charge or blink on the way does confuse me. I've got a feel like he thinks blink probably started along with his plus one. And he's uh, only now going for his second Robo. His second Robo Bay is about to finish as well, so it looks like he's not going to pick up on that. And won't be able to cancel it. So six gate disruptor, a warp prism with two immortals, plus an observer, cleaning up the creep very nicely. Serral trying to play as standard as they come. 57 drones. He's just slowly recovering the work account. He's going to take a fourth base, try to drone that one up as well. He's got a bit of a gas uh, bank from his early four gas mining. So he's like, yeah, we'll just we'll just play a bit more mineral focused. If we can get the fourth base mining, you know, get up to 70 workers, take a fifth as well and transfer from your uh, natural as it mines out in about one minute. That could be effective. That being said, Hiru is still up six workers. He's got a fourth base coming. He's realized Blink didn't start. Now he's chrono boosting it. And Serral has not seen that fourth just yet. He's expecting the expansion pattern in the other direction. Observer in the back does survive for now. I'd love to see him run it to the corner and recall that Observer. Spore Grillers and Queens hunting it down methodically. Serral trying to deny Hero's vision. Hero has the advantage in this game, clearly. However, Stalker Disruptor, if Serral gets enough units up, it's going to be hard to push in for the win. We saw Hero dilly-dally earlier in the series on Radu set. He's got to make sure he's a bit more decisive this time around. Cannon does get focused down. No cancel. Fourth base is also going to go down. Let's see if Hero can at least make him pay a big price for it. Stalker's overkilling pretty massively on those Zerglings, but he's quick to rebuild it. And at least he kills a bunch of Zerglings, so not as bad as if you get completely caught out of position. Infestation Pit starts up, plus two melee. Still only 62 workers for Serral, 64 now. I guess that's something. He really needs a fifth base because his natural's about to mine out, man. 120 minerals, 220, 270, and 190. Those are all going to expire by about 13, 13 and a half minutes. Ling Bane Ravager trying to gather up. Disruptors poking forward onto Creep. What a mad dog. Oh, Hero is such a crazy guy. Choosing to push that far forward. He's got four disruptors, four immortals, and a big pack of stalkers. I mean, he's got the numbers. We said the problem is he just didn't keep pushing when he needed to in the last game. Blink's done. Plus two is about to finish. He's got charge on the way. He's taking a fourth base behind it. Why not trade? Keep Serral low on workers. Don't let him max out. Don't let it get to that point where your early lead disappears. The gold base gets cancelled. Lovely play by him. He's got cannons and batteries up on the fourth. So the, the Zergling run by only about 15 lings will not be enough to take that down. Should be able to defend that just fine. Disruptor shots do come forward. They don't find the mark. Serral's splits are good. Back at his fourth. Oh, Serral takes out the cannon. He's not expecting that. Disruptor does hit a few of these banelings. Good pullbacks by Hero. Nice micro. Almost friendly fires his own stalkers. But it looks like the rich gas base does get defended. Alcyon looking good for Hero. He's way up in supply. He's got those four immortals. I love the way he sits these a bit further back. So as the stalkers retreat off creep, that's when the immortals and the zealots join in. And the disruptors are just poking in and out, looking for shots. So far, Serral has almost completely evaded them. Oh, but that comes to an end as two Ravagers go down to that disruptor shot. A Ravager going down to that one as well. And more importantly, of course, those disruptors forcing him to scatter and split. 11 probes go down to a Baneling run by in the north. Another Baneling run by goes in. Hero not paying attention. 24, 26, 28 probes go down. But Hero has a monstrous army on the front. He just took big economic damage. But if he can push forward on the front, it shouldn't matter. He's got an almost unkillable army. And Serral says, no, 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 that is unkillable, pig. I'm tapping out right here. I'm at half the army supply. I can't beat that, mate. GG, Hero keeps himself alive. All right, all right, all right. Well, finally dropping a point there against the aggressive in-your-face play of the adept immortal push. Basilisk Serral in the top left. Finally falling to disrupt a stalker at the end of that game. Felt like a bit of a hearkening back to something from ages past. And interestingly, Hero, Dragon Kaiser Gaming Zero for the first time in this series, is going to block the base. Guess what? It's a 16 hatch this time, and he should get there just in time to block that. Very nice. Wait. Oh, Serral cancels a drone and just goes 15 hatch. Oh, you can see he canceled a drone. So he sacrificed a lava to get the hatchery down. I think that's worth it. <laughs> Oh, Serral, because his overlord saw the probe coming and he was like, mm, I really don't want to lose this, uh, have to take my third base. So, you know, you get damage though. You forced him to cancel a lava. Serral gets a full refund on the money, but of course he's going to be a little down on lava from where he normally would be. Um, we'll see if, how much that matters. I, I think when you're saving up for the pool and the gas, yeah, you don't really bank up much lava at that point. So yeah, this does hurt. Serral Cer would just be down a lava in this early stage. Um... 
Ugh, clever play. Clever play. I Should Hero have been just a few seconds early? Because I don't think you ever want to cancel both drones. I don't think you cancel two drones to do that, to take the 15 hatchery. Cancelling one is acceptable. Two is not. If you're there two or three seconds earlier, maybe that removes that option from him. But as it is, Hero once again going for one of his funky wall offs. Once again with the choke point on the outside of the wall, which I, I, I don't... I don't like. I do prefer the choke being next to the pylon and uh, and that sort of thing, but because this leaves two big openings. You've got you got a weak opening here and a hole there on opposite sides of the wall, and your units have to go further, like I said, to get between your bases. If you're trying to defend mutilisks or anything that runs in, it's harder for you to get from your third base back to your main. So definitely, and uh, I, I loved it at the start of the series, and I'm like, oh, damn it, change the wall off. Anyways, uh, Adept's on the way right now. The Nexus coming up. Stargate goes down. Ooh, okay. Back to basics. Don't, don't, don't stick to the Twilight play. It's a shorter map where Twilight is good. I think I'd be worried about Serral just trying to kill you with Roach Queen Walk. On the other hand, I don't think Serral needs to do that, but um, why not? It's a good map for it. Shove some Queen Roach across the map and, uh, and just kill him. I don't know about, maybe maybe like a Queenling Nidus. That's something that Dark regularly does catch Hero off guard with. They go back and forth on that one, though. To be fair, we've seen Hero shut it down pretty hard as well, but I think part of that's the metagame of him knowing that Dark loves that build. Notice the Adept Shade cancelled. He was hoping Serral would run Zerglings in. He could kill them. Serral didn't even build any Zerglings on that side. Well, he did. He built two, but he didn't send them across the map. Link speed's about halfway done here. Third hatchery is down for Serral. He's building a third queen, a fourth queen, making drones. Hero has two adepts out with the third on the way. Overlord outside his base, though, will see anything that tries to leave. First Oracle about to pop out. Perfect pylon timing. And he will have enough gas soon to start the second Oracle. He's just got to wait for 150 gas. And there we go. Chrono boost it a fraction of a second before the oracle starts in anticipation of that 150 gas. No big signs of hero's intention so far. He just moves out with an adapt, takes the third base. Nexus pylon perfectly placed there to create a choke point. Oracle flies into the third. Queens are ready. I wonder if hero just goes blink aggression. I wouldn't mind it. I would like it to be medium blink aggression into macro behind it, though. I feel like this would be a good point into the series to put on some decent pressure and just force a bit of an overreaction. With what's happened in that last game, force a bit of an overresponse and then kind of hit a bit of macro behind it up into a big four base ground based timing attack. I think Hero can beat Serral on the ground. In the skies, I have very little faith. As I said, I've, I, I, I've drawn this conclusion from watching him throw a lot of advantages away against Raynor, against uh, Dark, uh, many, many times against Dark by going carriers. So it's uh, it's not an unfamiliar thing for him to do. Forge and Twilight are on the way. Stalker's going to take down the Overlord. Keeping Serral in the dark would give a very big advantage. I like the light pressure so far. He's only forced 14 Zerglings. Serral, Serral seems very confident. Like, just the little details, right? Seven Queens, 18 Zerglings, no Roach Warren. Serral's like, yeah, I know exactly what's happening. I don't feel afraid. I'm not worrying about any edge cases. He's going to be charging plus one. Four more gateways going down, so six gate charge plus one. Not a bad way of playing. Oracles are going to rotate up into the natural. A fourth hatchery at five minutes. Serral's playing so greedy. I mean, not even like crazy greedy, but it's like it's appropriately greedy. There's just like there's no sign of like that little bit of extra caution that you normally have when you're playing a guy like Hero. I think this leads back to him shutting down things like that cannon rush so easily. Oh! Great micro by Serral. He loses a drone and a few hit points on his queens. Puts all three oracles deep in the yellow and orange. I mean, that's great. They're heavily damaged. They're not going to be nearly as useful in the future. Hero finds out about that fourth base already past halfway at the six minute mark. A few adepts are going to come forward. Oh, cancel that shade. Cancel that shade. Oh, God, cancel. Oh, no, he doesn't react in time. Serral gets the surround. Two of the adepts will survive at least because the oracles are here. Oh, but turning on all three oracles. Oof, big waste of energy as well. 
Serral's got him on the back foot. You never want to be on the back foot in this matchup. Serral here is kind of forcing reactions, gets a cannon, forces the oracles to all turn their lasers on again. Massive energy waste. Fourth oracle is building. This is mass oracle charge, guys. A lot of zealots coming out right now. There's, there's 12 roaches, though. He's built 12 roaches. He's now building eight drones to, for the fourth. Serral being a bit greedy. He sees the zealots. He's going to find out. That is a pretty fearsome plus one zealot timing. The oracles, unfortunately, don't have much energy to support this. There's plenty of queens to beat the oracles. They are all damaged. The zealots not able to overwhelm the roaches. Plus one armor's on the way behind this as well as blink. Hero is not going to keep just massing zealots. He does need ranged units that you can actually defend with. Zealots are not a great defensive unit. Turns out when you have a sword, it's not as good as a gun at defending. Can you, can you, I think you guys can fill in the gaps on why. It's uh, one you can shoot from far away and pull back and shoot again. The other one, you need to charge into the roaches and try to stab them. And it's, it's not very good at way of utilizing a defensive position, really. Hives on the way, Baneling speed, plus one melee. Drone does get picked up. That is a lot of zealots. 25 zealots. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. He's trying to go after the roaches, but roaches in a ball are so good at kiting down these zealots. The queens in the mineral line are just going to try to buy time. The oracle zealot goes ham right now. The top of our screen, all the queens just went down. The oracles just did some fantastic damage with those zealots. Isolating 13 drones have gone down. This is actually great damage. Is it enough though for how many zealots he's thrown away? Oh, only two oracles left. The zealots are hitting the roaches, but he doesn't quite... Oh, wait, wait, maybe he does! As the zealot rally comes in, it looked like he could maybe turn that to his favor. But he's now having to swap in his stalkers. Unit's lost tab is 300 resources in the favor of the Zerg. Serral is up four workers as well. He has a fourth base up in mining. Hero has just started his. The zealot's trying to run around for a bit of a counterattack. Bleeding extra zealots there. That is unfortunate. Stalkers are coming forward with Blink about to have 1-1 one, one upgrades. The roaches do not have any upgrades. It's one thing going well for Hero in this game. And the roaches won't be able to commit to take out the fourth base. Zealots in the south are pushed back. They do survive. Plus two melee and adrenal glands is on the way. 79 workers. The moment he defends, Sarah reproduces those workers. He's going up to 85 now as well with a few more in production. Second forge is on the way for Hero. I shared my thoughts earlier in the series. I don't really care for the second forge as something you're doing every game predictably. You're going to need to get to past max out and, uh, you know, get to those big fights multiple times for those upgrades to really pay off. Right now, surviving the next wave or keeping several small, doing damage to him or building your own economy and surviving. Those are the, the, the two choices you have. Investing in the upgrades that will give you better army five minutes from now. It's worth it if we can be not too far behind in five minutes. That, I think, is going to be a long, long, long shot. Two twos on the way, but a nice contaminate does slow down the plus two uh, attack. Batteries and cannons going down on the fourth base. Already has a battery on the third. No wall off there, though. Eight gateways are up, so it is at least eight gate stalker production now. Stalker's going to poke forward through the middle. Carapace coming in on the second Evo for Serral. Did he get plus one range? No. Oh, that tells me he's thinking about an Ultra Cavern. If he's going Carapace already, he's totally thinking about adding Ultras to this. He hasn't got any spellcasters yet, but seeing so much Stalker Zealot, I, 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 Infestors are a choice. With no Robo units being out, Vipers doesn't make a lot of sense, but Infestors is a choice. For now, Serral's like, no, 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 dude, I'm just going to make Ling Bane with the Roaches that I've already got. We can think about that stuff later. For now, it's Baneling time! Welcome to Pound Town, Protoss Hero, with some great positioning, though. I love his blink backs, his battery overcharge. Serral kind of attacks into a valley of death. The charge of the Roach Brigade does not go well. Banelings in the south, though, are going to make up for it. Oh, Hero is always so slow to pull his probes against Banelings. It's one of his big weaknesses in this matchup. You know, I watched Showtime pull his probes like 14 times successfully, and it's always like the 15th Baneling run by that kills 30 workers. Hero, it's always the first one. Hero is always so busy attacking that he's just not used to like watching on the defense. So it, it almost feels like if Hero's attacks don't go well and he's not pinning the Zerg, he's so vulnerable to those Baneling backstabs. That being said, his hold in the middle was really good. He has 1,500 or 1,700 resources ahead of the units lost. Mass Stalker here, two twos almost finished, not quite. Serral's gonna fight before the two two is finished for the Protoss, that's a very good choice. But nice pullbacks does evade it. More probes do go down, another eight workers dying on the fourth. He needs to hold that probe key down. Does Mr. Hero. The Ultra Cavern has just finished for Serral. 
Plus two melee adrenal zerglings, the roaches and veins as well. The stalker's doing some nice stutter step. Good blink so far, but Hero, he's got a lot of numbers on his tail. The oracles can turn those lasers on, but they're low on energy, so he's trying to be patient on it. I think those oracles need to get down here. Those oracles need to get down here. Hero's bleeding stalkers at this point because Cyril is just chasing him all the way home. Masslings on the south are trying to overwhelm. The zealots should be able to hold on there. The oracles didn't turn their lasers on for that entire time. Fascinating. Stalker's taking out a few more of those banelings on the chase. Hero's actually back in this series now. Problem is, he's on mass Stalker. I think he's going to need to set up some Zealot run by. He's a little bit slow on those blinks as well. He wasn't expecting Cyril to turn and fight him there. He's lost 20 Stalkers now. That's a lot more than he was meant to. Remember, he's down in the economy because he lost so many workers to probes. He has to be efficient. Throwing so many Stalkers away there was a little bit dirty. 85 workers for Cyril. He's got massive economy and production. He's got his 3-2 on the way. It's not there just yet. It's still just Ling Bane with some roaches in the back. Stalker Micro is good for Hero. He's on 2-2 two, two upgrades. It's 2-2 two, two against 2-1. No upgrades for the Roaches, but 2-1 for the Circling Baneling. Stalker's blinking back. Stasis traps are there in reserve and great traps. But Oracle's turn on the lasers. Extra trap goes down. He's got to blink forward there to try and punish, but Hero's got to be careful because that's also going to trap him from retreating. The same Stasis traps that work to his advantage could also hurt him. He's shoving it in right now with Reckless Abandon. Hero decisive as always, but of course, Mauling Bane hits his third base. 14 more workers go down. Hero wants to attack, but it's Serral who says, if you keep attacking, mate, I will rip your economy to shreds. And every time you overcommit, I'll just barely hang on while destroying your economy at home. And that's a big problem right now. We're on 10 gateways, but only 53 probes. He's not building a single worker. Hero is all in. He's saying, screw it. I'm going to try and kill you with my micro right here, right now. But with only 19 stalkers left, I worry that it's a bit too late to make this happen. He's F2ing across the map. He's saying, let's get her done. Get her done. He's going to get in there. The queen's going to go down. The Link Bane roaches are all going to fall apart. But I feel like this is just an overwhelming army. Cyril's got 3-1. He's got plus 2. Carapace almost finishes. Kindness plating and anabolic, uh, anabolic synthesis is ready. He's got the steroids for those ultras. And they are juiced up and ready to go. He's got EPO pumping through his veins. He's, he's, he's ready for all the good stuff. He could uh, win a couple of those... Uh, Having a, a mental uh, mental blank there. I was, I was going to say, he's, he could win a couple of those French bike races. That's literally the words that popped into my head. I'm like, yeah, that's to a difference. It's it's a pretty easy name to remember. But there, there we go. We got there in the end. 13 probes go down. The Stalker's actually microing their hearts out. But unfortunately, he's lost all the economy on his third. Once again, Cybercore going down as well. That Ultra Cavern's going to fall, isn't it? I know, that Ultra Lisk. But uh, it's, a, it's a Pyrrhic victory. It's I killed one of your... Nope, even that Ultra got away. Never mind. Hero is absolutely screwed, man. So we'll just play a, a more diverse game as we see <laughs> cinematic chunks of Ultralisk and Ribcage uh, f flying up into the camera. Very nice to see. And uh, Zergling run by is just, just doing good. I love the Ultra Edition as well. He didn't need to do it early, but just eventually, hey, you're up against gateway units. Why would you not build Ultras, man? Being able to build a six armor, soon to be seven armor bad boy if he gets plus three, that'll be amazing. The Stalkers in the middle being quite annoying, but the Lings will surround. There's more Lings running in the front. The Nexus is so low. The Lings click on it. It goes down. There's Lings in the main base as well, depowering the Stargate. Zerglings chasing down the Stalkers on the left. Ultra Baneling clearing the base on the right side. And Saril is your Masters Coliseum champion. There were so many good matches this tournament, but my god, Saril, just on another level, looking unstoppable. In the lead up to Katowice, GG, well played.